Oh, that meat looks nice. That's a cold water ahi right there. At nighttime, the ahis will come up from deep water. Once the temperature of the ocean cools down a couple of degrees, they'll come up and whack a bunch of ika, malolo, and then they will retreat back down to cold water real quick. So we target like 55 to 58 degree water at 600 feet. But they're very sensitive. So, you know, if you're off by a few degrees or off by a, by a certain depth, then nobody home, yeah? Nobody home. Nobody home, so. If you're a fisherman, you gotta know how to cut a fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we live a different lifestyle than most people. We spend almost 300 days out of the year in the middle of the ocean. I'm not used to society. I live on the ocean, so I see everybody wants to eat fish, but they don't want to know where it comes from. From the beginning of mankind, the ocean was the most powerful thing on this planet, and it still is. We want our grandkids, we want our great-grandkids to be able to enjoy fresh seafood from the ocean. Each one is different. It's like a fingerprint. Trav, I, I met Travis in kindergarten. First picture we draw in class, he's got a picture of Marie M, you know, and it's a, you know, as good as a kindergarten kid could be, right? A boat, picture of you on it. This is me, this is my dad. We thought that was the coolest thing in the world, being a, fishing boat captain for your family. Uh, my father, he's a fisherman. Uncles, both my grandfathers were fishermen. I have three kids, two boys and one daughter. So I took them all fishing when they were eight, 10 years old to see what dad does, you know, three week trips. And the older boy, he hated fishing. And the younger boy, Travis, he loved it. And the daughter, she's probably still up in the air. Oh, I remember one long line trip. We had to take a day off and it was blowing 25, 30, and uh, he must have sat back on the stern for three, four hours with the rod and reel. He liked fishing. He was gone all the time when I was little. You know, my first memory was my mom would say, oh, dad's out fishing. And that was it. That was just how it was. And when his dad would be at sea, he just know that his dad was coming home and every day that week, he would show up and he'd have his boots on and he'd be ready to go to the dock. Ever since I was a little kid, that was my dream is to uh, captain my father's boat, you know? When I was a little kid, I thought that was the coolest thing. I always looked up to him and all my friends would go to the mainland to see their families or, you know, would get back to school and everyone's like, what did you do this summer? And I couldn't even explain it. I'm like, you guys don't even know. Jesse's really solid. He's born and raised in Ponape, Micronesia. I enjoy having him on the boat. He's real positive. What did the snowman tell to the other snowman? What's that? Do you smell Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. We call him Mighty Mouse. <laughs> pound for pound, he's one of the strongest people I've ever met in my life. And after we work together for so long, you know, like me and him working together, we don't really even need to say anything. We could just make eye contact and it's like, he knows what I'm gonna say before I even say it. He's my engineer, he's my deck boss. If, if Jesse wasn't on the boat, I probably would not wanna go. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not going out there without Jesse. It's hard work, it's real hard work. Our average ship's about two to three weeks. In nice weather, everything goes smooth. It's solid like 18 to 20 hour days. If somebody gets upset or any negative thing on the boat, you can't just get up and walk away, you know? 
they're here to work and make money to send home to their families, but we all live together, we all eat together, and <laughs> I'm closer with these guys than I am with my own brother. So <laughs> I got four guys from Indonesia. A couple of them are from Sumatra, a couple from Java. I'm young, um, half my crew are older than me. They're teaching me a lot, you know, I'm learning stuff from them. People from all over the world working together and the final outcome is pretty awesome. Up. You guys, hey, big one, one, yeah? One and rinse. Should be a fish out, rinse, tail rope, right when the hook come down, boom, up. <laughs> People try and stay on schedules. Like, okay, I want to set at sunrise and I'm going to pick up at six. At the end of the day, you never know. The water's always moving, the fish are always moving. Like, by the time you even start setting gear to the time you end setting gear, it's all different, you know? It's real hard to understand what's happening in the ocean. There's lots of technology, lots of worldwide data. Dealing with natural resources, we need to be trying to target larger fish that have been out there, they've already done their part. And uh, the smaller fish, we really need to keep a close eye on how we deal with them because that's the future. Tuna, they don't spawn until they hit this certain point. Once they do spawn, you're looking at two or three times a year, millions of eggs in the ocean. Being a little part of the Hawaii tuna tagging program and being able to tag the small ones and give NOAA and National Marine Fisheries Service a little bit of data, uh, it makes you feel good, you know, watching the small ones swim away and knowing that somebody's going to catch it in a couple years and it's going to be a way bigger fish and it's going to lay a bunch of eggs in the ocean. Trav is that guy who wants to know exactly what's going on in his boat, exactly what's going on with the fish and the environment around them. Practicing it sustainably means being on the deck like Trav is, means baiting your own hooks. Or you're targeting certain species, certain size, a certain quality of fish. Because when you carry enough like Trav does, it shows in the, the quality of your catch too. Dark red meat is better for pokey and sashimi. Eh? It's more, more soft, yeah? If there's one thing in this life that I want to do, carry on my family's legacy. Even these guys, these are my family. You know, like, I would, I would do anything for these guys. And when we're off the boat, it's not like the job's over. Like, we're a team, we're a family. Yeah, me and Pops, all the time I got to spend on the boat with him when I was younger. That was the best time of my life. I really want to give him some time off and just want to let him know that he's got a guy here to give him a break and keep it in the family. That's what Trav lives for. He doesn't measure it in dollars. He measures it in what is providing, what is sustainable, and what can be taught, kept, and carried on. He does it for a living, but a living that feeds friends, family, that feeds his soul. Trav, would do it for free. <laughs>